Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I'm not usually in the habit of making videos based solely on graphics card driver updates because most of the time there aren't any significant performance enhancements worth talking about. However, since the release of Nvidia's 522.25 driver, I've been reading and watching a lot of potential DX12 improvements and optimizations for RTX systems. As usual, different people's results have been, well, different, with some experiencing massive gains in specific titles. I thought I may as well test this driver out for myself, but instead of a high-end RTX card, I'm going to be using one of the more entry-level options, the 3050. This is the card I use on a daily basis, and as much as I like it, the RX 6600 still makes more sense, in my opinion. That said, it is still a very capable 1080p RTX card that should hopefully benefit from the improvements outlined in the latest Game Ready Driver article. I've chosen four titles at random, by which I mean four on the list that I actually had installed, and they all vary in terms of how much performance difference I should see, though what's written here is just based on Nvidia's testing, and things will differ depending on the PC used. My RTX 3050 is paired with the trusty i5-12400F, 16 gigs of 3200MHz dual channel DDR4, and I'm using Windows 10 Pro. Resizable bar is supported and enabled. All of today's tested games have built-in benchmark tools which I used in all scenarios, apart from one game which was a bit of an afterthought at the end, but I've used real-world gameplay for the comparison footage. This should give you an idea of how noticeable any FPS changes really are when we're actually playing the games. The games were tested with previous driver version 5.17.48 and then again with the new 5.22.25 release. Cyberpunk 2077 is up first and we actually saw minor improvements to the average 1% and 0.1% low figures. There is nothing significant here but we've gained roughly 5% on the average for just downloading something which is fine by me. Reminds me of the days when the download more RAM meme was going around, except this time we are actually legitimately downloading more frames per second. Pretty cool, but this is nothing compared to the next result. Forza Horizon 5 here really threw me off because this driver update brought with it an improvement of 11% on average, with a massive boost to performance. The percentile lows also got better too. Now Forza has always been more than playable on the 3050, even at the high settings, but this is a welcome improvement nonetheless because in those busier areas and action-packed races, the smoother frame rate can be felt. I also read that a lot of these optimizations are more beneficial in CPU bound scenarios, words almost straight from the Nvidia site there, and considering multi-competitor races can be quite hard on the processor, perhaps that's why we saw such a big performance jump. I would wonder what an even weaker CPU paired with this thing would do. I found that in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I actually lost a bit of performance based on the in-game benchmark run and when actually playing. This difference couldn't be felt during gameplay, but the averages and percentile lows did decrease, despite me running the in-game benchmarking tool three times with the driver versions cleanly installed. This was stated as having a 5% improvement on the Nvidia site, but as I said, this will vary on a system by system basis and on my PC, we didn't see any increases. That's a bit of a shame, but it's not a game-breaking difference and shouldn't put you off installing the new drivers at all. Red Dead Redemption 2 got a little boost to the average, but it was the percentile lows that benefited the most. Now, I usually test Vulcan for Red Dead Redemption 2, and that's what I'd recommend for most people, as it seems to perform a little bit better with less stutter. That said, DX12 didn't give us a bad result by any means. I do find it less consistent overall, but the new drivers alleviate this somewhat, so this can only be seen as a good thing. I'd still be inclined to use Vulkan, but if you do use DirectX and have had trouble with RTX cards in the past, now might be the time to see if things have changed. To finalise these tests, I tried a game that wasn't listed on the NVIDIA driver details page, but one that uses DX12. This is of course Elden Ring. I had to uncap the frame rate for a fairer comparison, but there is no built-in benchmark tool here, so I created and followed an identical path three times with each driver version in what was a custom run. This footage doesn't really represent that. 
If you're wondering why the RTX 3050 label is highlighted and looks like it's edited in, that's because it is. I forgot to change the label in Afterburner, back from a different card I went on to test later. Performance wise, and again there wasn't an overwhelming difference to the average, but the game is a lot more consistent as reflected by these percentile lows. As a bit of an afterthought I then tried the GTX 1630, albeit briefly. There's no mention of performance being improved on the older TU117 architecture, but I've got the card here so why not try it anyway. I jumped back into Forza which demonstrated the biggest performance difference today on the RTX card, but as expected there were no changes with this thing. I've mentioned it before, but the best way to improve performance on the 1630 is by overclocking. With all that said, RTX owners should download the latest 522.25 drivers, I'm sure most of you probably keep them up to date anyway. Doing so is literally like downloading more frames in some cases, but results will depend on the hardware that you're using and the games that you play, of course. Thank you very much for watching this one then, I thought I'd bring you this because I found it quite interesting to be honest that a driver update could improve things in some cases quite a bit here and of course in other games it didn't do as well but I think the results are worth talking about nonetheless. If you enjoyed this one leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.